Hello, welcome to Garden Chronicles. My name is James David. And in today's video, I would like to talk about these particular types of piper and these are very much fall into the rare plant category and somehow i find that it's quite intriguing as these are indeed challenging plants and i would like to talk about a little bit more on how i cultivate them in my garden so sit back and enjoy the show There are some ID contention when it comes to Piper Corcatum versus Piper Ornatum and I find that where the difference is basically Corcatum has a deeper burgundy underside whereas Ornatum has a green underback. However, many plant websites does mix it up and in a in way putting both together and, and sort of create more confusion. And in that context, I'm not so concerned or keen in exact identity of the plants rather in the ability of able to cultivate and collect them in my garden space. Just want to give some basic information concerning this particular plant, locally known as Sire Mera, similar like a herb where it's identified as bitter leaf, or also very much strongly used for traditional and cultural usage surrounding the Asia region. And these are often used for medicinal purpose and even any of the sacred and prayer functions and such as that as this particular type of plant is very much embedded in many cultures however coming back to this particular uh, bitter leaf this particular red one is highly sought after for medicinal uses here in surrounding areas in malaysia and indonesia I would like to make an emphasis on the trailing factor where you can actually note these aerial roots growing along the fence here which I've actually uh, showing here in this particular video. You can actually use these particular uh, parts for propagation however this particular pipe uh, are very challenging to use for propagation and chances of survival can be very slim so do take note on on the factor where these plants are sensitive plants one of the factors that i've actually noticed is that there are so many variants when it comes to this particular piper especially when it comes to colorization and i've actually noticed that the tones that are actually ranging from deep blood red to more on a pinkish fluorescent tones and there are also various sizes and shapes that comes with it which i've actually come across one particular one that is sold in vietnam where it is very much more on a narrow long form so there are so many varieties that is available it's more of able to have a fun of it to able to get your hands in all the types and collection one is known as Piper Sliverticum, uh, locally known as Sirepera or Silver Piper and this has more on silver tones, uh, different from the earlier one which is more on the red tones. However, it does actually have more of the iridescent kind of colorization if you were to view it properly where it does have some kind of sheen that it actually sort of like shines in that kind of uh, setting. This particular one do not have a darker underback. It's very much more plain, uh, similar like a normal piper plant. This particular one is identified as piper arcarides often mistaken for piper styloverticum where it's identified more of silver piper and the 
colorization appears to be very similar but this particular one is very much more on a sandpaper kind of pattern Another adding to the confusion is that this particular one, when it, when it produces a younger or more the immature leaves, they do have this sort of like a pinkish tones together with the silver. And this also adds to the confusion where it at times mistakenly identified for the red piper. Do take note that this particular piper is rarely cultivated in a commercial cent central position where these are often circulated among collectors' hands. Another factor that I want to mention here based on my observation here is that these are also identified as a wild form uh, due to the factor that these are often cultivated near the village surrounding areas. Hence, these are not highly sought after among the locals. Hence, that when it comes to collectors, these are considered a rare find. This particular one commonly known as bright eyes is actually a crossbreed between two different types of pipers and I find that this is very much cultivated for the ornamental purpose kind of rare plants category. One of the things that I actually noticed is that this particular one somehow have come across where it has reverted fully into a green colorization where if you receive lack of bright light area. So do Take note that this do require some level of brightness in order to keep its variegated colors. However, these particular pipers are not without challenge. Though they are medicinal plants, they do tend to get some pest attack, especially sort of like mites, if you can notice at the back of this leaf, a sort of kind of an infection, which I may have to attend to it shortly after this video. Based on my experience, I do find Piper Bright Eyes seems to be a little bit more hardy and able to handle the weather very well in comparison to the other two types of Pipers. I just want to show to you in this particular collection the very common type of piper plant which is commonly and locally known as beetle plant or beetle leaf and this is how it appears to be and I'm actually cultivating it and more on a direct hot sun area where it is actually required to grow in this kind of condition and I find that when it comes to this kind of fully green pipers they don't do so well in shaded areas however it's not impossible to cultivate in bright shaded areas one of the things here i've noticed that when they are exposed to the elements such as bright sunlight and sun and rain especially they seems to be able to weather the storm and in sort of like able 
to become more acclimatized, more stronger, and able to deter from all kinds of pest attacks, and also able to handle the weather in such a way that there won't be any sickness or even fungus problems. However, I find that when I cultivate them in uh, shaded areas, this seems to become more leggy, looking for sunlight, and somehow succumb to rot and easily wither away. Another factor when it comes to this bitter leaf plant is that they do require to have some place where they need to climb and crawl. And if at all that is not available, they can also able to crawl on, on the ground and somehow they can able to manage in that kind of growing conditions. However, they don't do so well in tight spaces and whereas, whereas there is a lack of light and, and that will be definitely a big problem, especially they do succumb easily to fungus attacks. Now I'd like to come to a place where I want to just share a very basic idea, a description where it comes to plant care. Here I just want to talk about the planting medium which I actually use is basically sand and coconut chips and at the base of it I actually use vermicompost for this particular root ball to be able to stabilize in that kind of condition. However, I must say that these are sensitive plants and not easy to be cultivated in comparison to other aroid plants so there may be chances where you may have to sort of like trim and plant and out of uh, from the 10 that you have cultivated maybe half may actually be the way so these are the challenges that i've actually know, uh, faced uh, one of the things that actually help is to put a plastic bag and cover it up to keep their humidity uh, factor stable and hence once that kind of uh, setting is available sort of like a greenhouse effect uh, those leaves that is being propagated together with the stem and especially the roots it will take sort of like three weeks to acclimatize and sort of like about two to three months for new shoots to appear that too can be depending because if it's too wet the rot may take place and if it's too dry the whole thing can wither and sort of fall the when the leaves and the stem may fall away so it can be challenging on that kind of note and also i've come across that some actually use uh, polite together with sphagnum moss it does work however a lot of uh, patience is required and in that kind of context uh, you may be on the factor of 50 50 chances of plant survival. Also the factor that once the watering, the uh, medium and also the lighting has been taken care of, then there's nothing much to be worried about, especially if the plant has stabilized itself, then it's considered the particular piper plant is quite stable and able to grow without much worry and care. However, I must caution when it comes to fertilizer that certain types of fertilizer, especially the stronger ones or the conventional pellet types, do not go so well for these types of variegated piper plants where you will be able to notice some burns at the side of the leaves. If that occurs, then stop using those fertilizer as it can actually cause more harm than good for these particular types of Piper plants. Finally, coming to this particular piper, it does have a different type of appearance where it's very much more like a heart kind of a shape and the leaves are quite thin and fragile. I, I do find that this particular one is super sensitive and I can say that I have a high time hard time cultivating this particular one as these are super sensitive and easily wither away due to lack of humidity i do try to 
able to propagate and even purchase it but somehow they don't do so well in a place where lack of humidity and when it comes to shock they do tend to drop off all the leaves and the leaves do also turn black <laughs> in a way dry up like paper if it comes to a position where lacking humidity and the place is too dry and this then to perish easily so i just want to make a collection of all the uh, pipers that is easily available in my region also there is another one that is piper elbow which is quite elusive and i find that that, that particular one has more on a white colorization on it however it's not a easy uh, available plants and i've noticed that because due to their finicky nature where in a position where if they are not grown or cultivated in a very stable uh, grounds in such a way that whoever is actually cultivating them in their garden and once that a particular plant has been transported or goes through those stress factor, they do tend to drop the leaves or the leaves tend to burn or something of that kind of thing. Hence, it is considered a sensitive plants however because of those nature a lot of collectors do consider them as challenging and somehow find that is much more worth to collect those kind of plants due to the challenge factor This is very much a basic care plant video for my Piper collection plants. I hope you find it uh, easy and educational for you. And if you have any questions, to put them in a the comment below. And also, I really appreciate if you can click like, subscribe and support my channel. See you again and, and hope you have an enjoyable day. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.